Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Life of Purpose. And today we'll be looking at uh, the last of Jesus' I Am statements. I'm Bill Brunson. And I'm Kit McClure. And today we're looking at the statement that Jesus makes in John chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. I'm the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. So, the image of, uh, for the Jewish people, the image of the vine would have been one that was deep in their hearts. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, Oftentimes, Israel is described as God's vineyard, and um, the idea that God is the vine dresser and they are the God, they are God's vineyard. It was even so important to them that when they built the temple on Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, uh, they carved around the doorways of the temple. They carved a relief that would be the vine and the branches and the the grapes that would be on the vines and and so they they carved that and in certain seasons of the year they would gild that so that when you were coming through the Kidron Valley and looked up at the at the Temple Mound you would see the light hitting the side of this white stone temple but then just sparkling off of the vine and the branches and so it was very significant to them and they understood that that they were they were the people that God had planted in this area and God was going to take care of them like a vine dresser takes care of the grape vines but now Jesus here still in this last evening of life as he continues to teach his disciples he now says I am Yahweh I am the true vine I am the vine and you are the branches. And so he takes something that they would have been very familiar with, and he turns it in a very dramatic way so that it's not Israel and their connection to one another as Israelites that was the, the vine uh, and the branches, but instead it was him. And he is the vine, and it is their connection to him and to one another is all part of the of that, that's where the life comes from. And that's where the fruit comes from. So he takes something very common and turns it. And, and it was fortunate that um, in this particular uh, saying that Jesus has, it was in private. Mm -hmm. Because it would have also created an entire outrage for uh, the Jewish leaders have they heard it? They're, Absolutely, they're in the discourse. Would have. They're they're here in the upper room, and he's just discussing it with his disciples. But it is a huge shift. No longer is Israel the principal group. It's it's you disciples who are going to make the church, and I am Yahweh. And uh, so that would have gotten you killed uh, mm -hmm. pretty easily. But but Jesus is making that shift, and yeah. he does get killed. Uh, because he knows that it's not going to be accepted by the religious leaders. But God is doing something really different, mm -hmm. and he's trying to get the disciples to be ready. Now, so so you start looking at all the images that you have with, uh, with uh, keeping a vineyard, and they're pretty significant, really, theologically for us. Oh, yes. I mean, you have, you know, it is the planting uh, it is tending the vines. It's pruning the vines. Um, it is dealing with the the old parts or the dead parts and those being burned, gathered up and burned. Um, and ultimately, it's trying to yield the largest harvest that you can uh, to bear the most fruit possible by properly tending the vine. Recently, one of our other pastors was talking about how vines are tended in order to produce the most fruit. And she was saying that it's not just that a vine dresser goes and and trims off the absolute dead parts, uh, and that's all they worry about, and that's all they deal with. She said that in order to produce the most fruit, 
sometimes the the vine dresser has to go in and trim away other parts that aren't dead, but they just aren't necessary. And so they're healthy in a way, but they're not necessary. And so ultimately you're getting all the nutrients now once you've trimmed away the the unnecessary and and the dead have fallen off. Uh, you've got all the nutrients now going into the going into the fruit, and so the harvest actually is larger. Um, and I think sometimes in our life, when we look at it, um, we see this happen. It's it's not just that God uh, leads us to get rid of the parts of our life that are absolutely positively horrible, uh, though God would want us to do that. Uh, but God also works in us to prune the things that pull us away. Not necessarily awful things, horrible things, but things that monopolize our time, things that tie up our energy, things that have gotten us where, you know, we financially are are so burdened and all these kind of decisions that we've made or things like that that aren't in and of themselves horrible they still need to go if we need if we're going to be able to bear the fruit that God knows we're capable of you know in my younger life I I used to play uh, golf um or as I like to say I I used to hit golf balls um I don't think it's the same but my father was a great golfer and he always wanted me to be um a great golfer and 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 I just never so I could never uh, have a hook I couldn't get rid of it and I found myself always flustered, angry. Uh, then he and I would get mad at each other because he was trying to help me you mm-hmm. know, figure out how to do it. And finally, I just came to this moment and I said, you know, really, I'm either going to have to give up my golf or my religion because <laughs> I don't think the two can go exist. Yeah. You know, there are things in our lives that we just keep pursuing that aren't necessarily bad things. I mean, it was good to be with my father. It was, right. it was, it was beautiful to be outside. Uh, but it really wasn't leading to anything productive in my life. And mm-hmm. now I don't claim to be a, you know, a, uh, an expert on vine growing, but I did watch a video one time. There you go. And uh, so, so when the, the buds come out in the spring, they come out with two different, uh, two different little, little branches. And if you don't cut one of those two branches, then the energy is, is, is distributed doubly. Mm-hmm. And it actually reduces the number of grapes that are produced. Mm-hmm. So a good vine dresser goes out and prunes off those the, one of those two, usually the least healthy of the two, so that the one that is most healthy has the most energy coming from the vine to produce good fruit. And and I think that's where where God looks at our life and goes, you know, that's that's not a bad thing, but that's not going to lead to spiritual fruit is not going to lead to spiritual depth. And so why keep that in your life? Let's let's get rid of that piece. Well, and, and we see this, we can see this in, in a lot of other areas of life where our our goal, you know, our goal with God is to have a better relationship with God and to fulfill our purpose that God knows we're capable of and and whatever, use the gifts that God has placed in us and to bear fruit for God's kingdom. And so, yes, we, we need to get rid of those those parts that aren't really allowing us to do that. But we do this in all other areas of life, too. We probably have places where our goal is to spend more time with our family. And so we plan a vacation, but we plan a vacation that is so packed with things to do, and we end up stressed because we're trying to meet all of the, these deadlines and, and get to every one of these stops and every one of these places that we end up mad at each other. And by the end of the vacation, we're not speaking to each other. Doesn't really accomplish the goal of the vacation. The family dinner, we're going to get everybody together and eat dinner together. And then we spend all of our time prepping for it so that by the time they get there, one or two people are trapped in the kitchen getting everything ready and the family comes in and by the time the family sits down to eat, half the family's worn out or irritated because they weren't, everybody wasn't helping. There's a lot of these things where our goal and what we decide to do to accomplish it don't, it doesn't really 
doesn't really work because we end up with those two things. We have the, the idea of let's get together and go on a trip as a family. Wonderful idea to spend time. But the other, and let's plan this sucker to the extent that there is not a waking moment that we're not doing something. And we say waking moment, we're getting you up at six o'clock in the morning, you're going to bed at midnight. Um, that's probably not the healthiest and probably needs to be pruned. Let's get together for supper. Well, let's plan a meal that is so complicated and has so many side dishes. It's going to take me two days, three days to, to cook it and two to three days to clean up after it. I'm going to be worn out. I'm going to be mad, going to be irritated. And nobody's going to help me clean up. Or nobody's, nobody's <laughs> doing that. And so, you know, I could plan that meal and we could, we could order pizza and sit down as a family and share a meal together and enjoy one another. So, in, in, in so much of life, we end up with these moments where there is, there is a good, solid purpose that we, we have. And then there's the other part of it that, that we need to prune off because that's going to, we're not going to accomplish a purpose. If our goal is to bear fruit for Christ and, and, and to live connected to that vine that is Jesus, because he says, I am the vine. Um, if if our goal is to do that, then we have to look and see, okay, so what are those other parts of my life that I'm allowing or I'm thinking will help me accomplish that goal or I'm allowing to, to be in my life and really they don't help me at all. The nutrients and, and the time and the energy and the effort and all of that that should be going into following Christ are now pulled over here and I look at my end of, end of the day and I didn't have any time for this. I didn't have, have enough. I didn't have time in my day for Jesus because I was too busy doing these other things. And there's one more piece of this. Uh, Jesus says that we really need to, we have to stay connected to the vine. And when we disconnect ourselves from the vine, often from, you know, again, our, our our goals are in the wrong direction. Right. Um, well, we 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 curl up and dry up and die. And spiritually, uh, being a part of the vine, the, the church, the other people, uh, growing with others in in the, in the knowledge of Christ together, uh, you can't do that except on the vine. You can't right. individually do that. And so, um, Jesus said, you've got to be a part of the vine because it all works together. Uh, and when you're separate from that, uh, it becomes destructive. And so we have this beautiful picture of of how it is that we, as followers of Jesus, somehow get you know grafted into this vine, and we're a part of it. And by being a part of the vine, we are connected to the deepest spirituality that exists in the world. And so our calling is to let God prune those things that that don't that don't uh, matter and our calling is to stay connected and and to not move away in our lives from uh from the people and from the church and from the groups that help us grow in christ and for god to help us produce as much fruit and bring more people to the vine as possible so that we too can experience the great joy of eternal life absolutely Thank you.